At around 11 p.m. on December 6, 2016, a man named Julio Perez went with his friend to a convenience store a couple of blocks away from his house. According to what he shared online two days after, his friend had been afraid to go by herself because the store parking lot was known to be unsafe after dark. After spending some time at the store and buying dinner at Carl's Jr., Julio said bye to his friend and pulled out of the parking lot. But just a few seconds later, a red car can be seen pulling out of the same parking lot and starting to follow him on his way home. Disturbingly, as soon as Julio arrives at the stop sign, the red Chrysler can be seen pulling up right in front of him and blocking his path. So, uh, hit me up tomorrow then. Later. Given the circumstances, Julio reacted much quicker than most people would. As soon as he saw someone about to get out of the red car, he put the car in reverse and skillfully backed away. Unfortunately for him, the driver of the red car refused to give up so easily and continued to follow closely. At one point during the chase, the attackers throw an unidentified object at Julio's car in an effort to get him to stop. This is when he decides to call 911 for help. Hey, there's a car following me. He's throwing shit at me. I'm on Lomas, go I'm on Lomas going eastbound, and he's, he's, I don't know what he's doing, man. Hey, Lomas, and what's the closest car street Right now, San Pedro. It's a red light. Holy shit. I mean, they're, they're, I don't know what they're trying to do, man. Uh, oh, my God, man. Do you see what it looks like? It's a red, it's a red uh, Chrysler 300. Holy cow. Are they still throwing things? They're just right behind me. I don't know what they're doing, man. Although the 911 operator was probably dispatching units as they spoke, it would have probably taken the officers at least a few minutes to arrive, which would have been extremely dangerous for Julio. Luckily, as he's on the phone with the dispatcher, he spots a cop car stopped at a traffic light and pleads for help. They're right behind me. I think, I don't know what the hell is going on. Oh, there's a cop right next to me. This guy right behind me. Hold on. Hey, this guy right Are you here. still there? Are going is after the officer right there with you? No, he just he just went on a high speed car chase. Holy cow! Okay, hang on with me. Hang on. I'm with the. I, I just follow a police officer right now. I'm not sure what the hell just happened, man. How you doing, man? I'm, I'm with the 911 operator right now. Listen, I don't know what happened. I pulled out. I was gonna go get some food right there on Central. And then all of a sudden, this car just pulled up right in front of me. I thought they were gonna carjack me or something, man. 
Okay. And they started to get out. I put it in reverse, and I just got the hell up out of there and went down towards San Pedro and Central. Did you get a plate number? I wasn't able to get Man, it. Man, I was... Hell That's no. okay. That's fine. Like I, I said, I, I got it on camera, though, bro. Do you have it on camera? Yeah! Unfortunately, the suspect managed to get away from the officer during the high-speed chase, and it was never confirmed what his intentions were that night. But judging by his behavior, it's more than likely that this was an attempted carjacking. Had the officer not been at the right place at the right time, Julio would have had to stop at the red light alone, where he would have been at the mercy of the attacker. Because neither the cop nor Julio could get the red Chrysler's license plate, the Albuquerque Police Department couldn't pursue the matter any further, meaning that the suspect probably continued preying on other victims on the road. This footage was captured on a random road on the outskirts of Warsaw, Poland on March 30th, 2014. Inside the vehicle is a man and his daughter. The road is pretty poorly lit, and even with headlights on, the driver probably can't see more than 20 or 30 feet in front of him. A few seconds into the video, a car traveling in the opposite direction flashes its headlights at the driver in what appears to be a warning. Unfortunately, the driver doesn't have enough time to react, and this is where things take a pretty dark turn. After swerving to avoid the man standing in the middle of the road, the driver attempts to correct the vehicle's path. However, this is much easier said than done in the heat of the moment. Unable to control the car, the father and daughter fly off the road and come to a rest in a ditch. Although it appears that the man had his back turned to the car at the moment of the incident, there's still no reason to be standing in the middle of a pitch black road while there are cars passing by. Given the man's irrational behavior, it's possible that he was either under the influence of something or attempting to take his own life. But because the man immediately fled the scene, his true intentions that night are anyone's guess. According to the driver, he and his daughter both sustained minor injuries, and the police were never able to find the mysterious man. In 2018, Lauren and Brian Swenson were in the process of opening a CrossFit gym in Nairobi, Kenya with two local trainers. One day, the Utah couple were on their way to do some filming with their trainers to promote their gym when they suddenly came across a traffic jam on the main road. Soon after taking a detour on a dirt road, the Swensons and the trainers passed two officers on foot with weapons who gestured for the couple to give them a ride. For reasons they didn't disclose, they chose not to pick up the officers and continued driving until they came across a white public transport vehicle stopped in the middle of the road. Although the couple didn't notice at the time, the driver of the white van tried to warn them with his headlights, but they missed the signal, and this is where things get disturbing. Uh, I'd rather assume they do, and not Yeah. Drive. 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 Drive forward. Cross. Yep, drive forward. Drive forward. Hey! Just as they pass the van, three men armed with machetes appear from behind the vehicle and charge at the Swenson's car. Reacting quickly to the situation, the driver immediately shifts the vehicle into reverse to gain some distance. As the men get closer, one of the trainers instructs Brian to drive forward, and as he does, one of the attackers tries to reach through the window with his machete. In a Facebook post she shared after the incident, Lauren mentioned that when they first saw the bandits, Brian's window was only partially up, and that he sped back in reverse to buy some time to roll it up. When the bandits attacked the car, the window was cracked a couple of inches, but luckily it wasn't enough for the machete to fit through. As Brian speeds away on the dirt road, one of the trainers mentions that he could see cops arriving at the scene. Alarmingly, a shot could be heard behind the vehicle, presumably from the confrontation between the cops and the men with machetes. In her Facebook post, Lauren mentioned that if she had picked up the officers or even let them ride on the side rails as they went up the road, they would have likely opened fire on the bandits. Luckily, the Swensons and the trainers were able to ride away safely, but it was not confirmed if anyone was hurt after the encounter. In May of 2021, a series of storms swept through West Virginia, bringing winds as strong as 70 miles per hour to the region. 
On May 26th, a woman named Amber Revis was driving down Route 51 in Jefferson County when power lines started falling across the road. This is what her dash cam captured. With a swift maneuver, Amber manages to swerve off the road just in time to avoid the impact of the power lines. She later uploaded the video to Facebook and thanked the people who stopped to help her. These situations are incredibly dangerous for more than one reason. In addition to the threat of being crushed under the weight of the falling power line, electrocution is also a significant risk. If a live power line makes direct contact with a car or even comes close to it, the driver can be fatally electrocuted. The power line could also potentially ignite the car's fuel, leading to a fire or explosion. Luckily, the wires didn't come close enough to Amber's car to do any damage, and she was able to drive away unharmed. This clip was captured in Chile on February 26, 2022, and later uploaded to Reddit. In the footage that was captured by the driver's dash cam, the white car in front can be seen braking more than is necessary and moving a little suspiciously down the road that leads up to a tunnel. The driver with the dash cam keeps his distance as the white car comes to a complete stop. And this is where things get interesting. As soon as the white car stops, at least four suspects jump out and start running towards the driver's car in what we can assume to be a carjacking attempt. Having sensed that something was wrong from the start, the driver reacts in a split second and accelerates quickly. The attackers have just enough time to move out of the way as the driver rams into the white car and takes off the door as he speeds away. One thing that caught many viewers' attention is the fact that the man remained incredibly calm throughout the attempted carjacking. His awareness of the situation and quick thinking ultimately kept him out of harm's way, and based on his behavior, it's very likely that this isn't the first time something like this happened to him. This seems to be echoed by the description that was uploaded to Reddit by the user who posted the video. The caption read, To give more context, this happened in Chile. I wasn't driving, but I often use that route. Here, this type of carjacking has become so common that it's a risk to get out of the car after 10pm, and all drivers have learned to keep their distance from the front cars on exits. There's not a lot of information on this incident online, and it was never confirmed if the carjackers were caught by police or not. In August of 2020, a series of fires broke out across Northern California, causing a wave of destruction, the likes of which had only been seen five times before in that area. In what came to be known as the infamous LNU Lightning Complex, multiple fires merged together, burning a total of 363,220 acres, destroying 1,491 structures, and heavily damaging another 32. Caused by a combination of thousands of lightning strikes, a record-breaking heat wave, and strong winds blowing across the state, the LNU Lightning Complex soon grew to be the sixth largest fire complex in California history. One of the largest fires, known as the Hennessy Blaze, originated in Napa County and eventually merged with seven other fires to burn over 300,000 acres of wildland. On August 18th, just a day after the Hennessy fire started, a man named Tyler Day captured dashcam footage of the walls of flames as he drove through the blaze on Highway 128 and Steel Canyon Road in Napa. This is what he saw. In what looks like a scene from an apocalyptic movie, Tyler drives through the raging fire to safety, capturing this terrifying footage of the burning forest along the way. From the threat of falling trees to melted roadways and blocked paths, driving through a raging fire is obviously extremely dangerous. Luckily, Tyler was able to make it out alive. 
Sadly, the same can be said for others, as the fire complex claimed the lives of six people and injured another five as the flames engulfed entire communities in California. At the time of the recording, the Hennessy fire was 0% contained, and it wasn't until October 2nd of that year that the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection announced that the entire complex had been extinguished. On the evening of Sunday, April 14th, 2019, a power line came down at the intersection of Route 70 and Colonial Drive in Manchester County, New Jersey, in the middle of a thunderstorm. The wire ended up falling and getting stuck on a traffic light, and in the early morning hours of Monday, April 15th, an employee with Jersey Central Power and Light went to untangle the wires. Sergeant Hemhauser from the Manchester Township Police Department was parked at the intersection, thanks to which the incident was captured on the dash cam of his patrol car. In the footage, the worker can be seen untangling the wire and pulling at it in an attempt to get it unstuck. Of course, for this to be safe, the power line would have to be de-energized, especially if the ground was still wet. In a later interview, Sergeant Hemhauser claimed that he was under the impression that the power line had been previously de-energized, and it seems as if the worker thought the same thing. But just a few seconds into the video, the worker gets the scare of a lifetime when the power line touches the ground. As soon as the wire makes contact with the wet road, it bursts into flames. The worker can be seen immediately dropping the wire and leaping back in surprise, obviously not expecting the power line to be live. After the initial shock, the utility worker takes off running and makes his way to safety. According to Sergeant Hemhauser, the flames were so hot that they burned holes in the asphalt on the street. After the incident was reported, Jersey Central Power and Light immediately launched an investigation to determine why the power line was even live in the first place if a utility worker had been given the green light to fix it. Although the exact cause of the incident was never publicly revealed, no further incidents have been reported in the area. This dashcam footage was captured on March 1st, 2013 in Bashkira, a republic of Russia that sits between Volga and the Ural Mountains in Eastern Europe. In the video, a tornado can be seen quickly approaching the vehicle and the adjacent house. What follows is a shocking display of the sheer force of nature as the 130 mile per hour winds wreak havoc on the house and its surroundings. At first, only the tree and some tarp that was flying on the ground can be seen moving in the wind. But just a few seconds later, the roof is ripped off the house, the vehicle is thrust forward, and debris starts flying everywhere as the tornado rages on. When the video was originally uploaded to Reddit in 2014, the user who posted it didn't include any context surrounding the incident. We can only hope that there was no one in the house when the tornado struck, but we'll likely never know if that was the case.